Do you feel that it's important to include flaws and in shorts when writing new characters, my friend? I will admit this is definitely one point that is based purely on opinion, but I personally feel that one of those two things is actually essential to creating beloved and enduring characters. And by the end of this video, I plan to explain not only why I think that way, but also account for the major exception I find. Now the first thing to do is now to define what I'm talking about with characters having flaws or torts, because it can often be tempting to put them in almost the same territory for characters, and in fact because some traits can even be both depending on how the story is. But a flaw is defined as being a defect or an imperfection, basically a ton or a drawback. Whereas a twerk is generally something that isn't normal. It may seem strange to some people, but for the most part, it won't get in the way. For personal examples, I would consider my current habit of almost getting deer in the headlights looked when I have to take initiative to start conversation, at least at the time of the recording, to be a flaw, as it gets in the way of the life I want to have. On the other hand, my habit of eating the pizza toppings and then eating the trust is probably more of a twerk, as it's different, but if that's someone's major issue with me, they are probably just looking for something to complain about. Now, there is one thing that really does kind of dinner on my skin when it comes to talking about twerks and flaws, and that bad behavior should never be excused as being twerky. And there's a big difference between just being like blunt or logical or inexperienced with people and being rude to people. Basically, bad behavior should always be treated as a drawback because behavior is learnable. It can't be changed, so why would people in the story continue to enable someone who is pretty much being a pain all the time. And again, the reason I'm telling that out is how flaws and twerts work in stories. A twerk will end up causing the character virtually no trouble at all. Whereas a flaw will cause trouble. In fact, the whole art of the story to be about them overcoming and drawing beyond the flaws that have held them back in the past. Thus, by its using kind of bad behavior as simply being twerky, it removes that fertile drown for character development, whether by learning that there's a better way to live or even how to thrive in spite of the twerts or what you've done in the past. And it also brings realness to characters and also relatability, as we ourselves are not perfect and things don't always work out the way we want them to, sometimes simply because we mess things up. Which is why I think flaws are essential to creating most characters that will last and remain popular. Yet, if all a character does is treat it as, oh, that's just how they are, and everything will simply work out for them anyway, it's probably not actually going to endear those characters to anyone except those people who have those exact same flaws and thus feel affirmed in having them because everything is working out for that character. <laughs> and this does actually touch on the exception, which are those characters who are actually just pure wish fulfillment in a sense. And this is the group that, while they may have a weakness of some sort, it's not really in how they approach things or it's because they are too idealistic or so forth. In fact, they may even web trade it so one way because they are so idealistic when people want gritty and realism and so forth. Or maybe they web people the wrong way because they're marketed to a different audience that, oh, characters shouldn't work like that anymore. But these characters end up remaining popular because it's just fun to follow their adventures. Maybe even sometimes because things work out for them. And that's kind of the reason why they remain popular is that it's fun. It doesn't really have to be down and dirty. It just has to take people for a bit of a adventure and to have some fun and it's escape from everyday life. So that is why those kind of wish fulfillment characters worked. 
but not every character should be that way. In fact, it would be pretty boring if they were. As well, what a flaw is tend to depend on the story, as I said earlier. If someone has a trouble interacting with people, for example, but they've been hyper-focused on a certain still set, then in a situation that calls for that still set alone, they will be fine. But if you then put them in a place where a social ability is necessary, like they have to work with a team to and communicate aspects of their still set to them, then they might run into some trouble and problems that they will have to work through. In addition, stories allow us to demonstrate some taunts to things that we may often think are just generally good, but can actually end up messing up or being taken advantage of in certain situations. Like when a villain realizes that the hero has gone far beyond compassion to almost this blind, bleeding heart complex where they have to help everyone who is seemingly in distress and doesn't really think about the situation before rushing in, and so they're able to set a trap by having one of their minions pretend to be injured or so forth, and thus deal a blow to the hero that way. And I think that's kind of probably the point with flaws in storytelling, in that there often needs to be a drawback to certain situations, and even perspectives that a character might have, it just gives a bit of nuance when you show the drawbacks that are inherent in it. For example, imagine if you traded a team-based game, but you decided that your favorite character was going to be able to cover every scenario, all the time, no exceptions, it just worked. Then the rest of the team is then pretty much just there at that point. And potentially all challenges of the game is removed because you just have to focus on one character who can deal with every single situation. But if you instead made sure that each character had pros or cons that came into play in different areas of the game, then it, the game actually becomes much more interesting because it's then up to the player on how to minimize the tons while also taking advantage of the pros and how they go about that. Maybe they even have to take out some characters at certain points of the game in order to actually dip through it and it just kind of gives a bit of a deeper experience than just being able to basically, I just, I think the expression is, roll your face on the keyboard <laughs> to dip through it. <laughs> Of course, as I said at the beginning of this video, this is all perspective-based, and this is just how I see things. And while I think I provided a decent defense of my opinion, maybe you see things in a way I haven't really considered. So why not share your thoughts in the comments below? And if you like this video, feel free to share it with someone you think will as well. Anyway, I'm Jonah, you've been watching Lions May Media, where we celebrate stories, including how to tell them, and what we can learn from them. Talk to you later, and have a great rest of your day.